It's that time, it's time for weather for Weather Geeks here on the 24th day of April 2025, and this goes into the record books as the warmest day of the year so far. Uh, we reached 84 degrees officially at the Youngstown Warren Airport today. This bested last Friday's 81 degree reading, uh, and so we uh, cleared the previous mark by three degrees, and you know, we've been keeping track of the monthly uh, uh, temperature departure from average. When we factor in both highs and lows, we're still a little below average, but only by a little bit and I do think we can make it back to average and even a little bit above average for the month as a whole because while there will be a cool down coming at the start of the weekend, it looks pretty warm compared to the average for the first couple of days of next week. So this 84 today, it's been a long time. It's been since September since we've been as warm as that, 214 days to be exact. Uh, we reached 84 right at the end of astronomical summer back in 2024. September 22nd, the high was 86, so it's been a long time since we've had an afternoon like today. But, you know, this time of the year can still be a wild card in our part of the uh, country. We had mid-80s today. But 20 years ago, do you remember this one? April 24th, 2005, five inches worth of snow. This is one of our bigger late-season snow events on this date. Hard to believe. 20 years Ago. Well, the National Weather Service office in Cleveland, that's one of the National Weather Service offices that services our TV viewing area, they declared that in their coverage area, the growing season has officially gotten underway. A lot of times weather service offices will declare that the growing season has begun even in advance of the date of the long-term average, uh, that last date of the um, or average date of the last freeze, I should say, um, because you know, based on the forecast for the next couple of weeks, it seems unlikely that we're going to see some sort of sub-freezing temperature before about May the 5th. That's the date here in Youngstown. It varies a little bit, of course, across northern Ohio and western Pennsylvania. So from here on out, if we do have a threat of sub-freezing temperatures from here through the rest of the spring, the National Weather Service office will issue uh, frost advisories and freeze warnings now that they have declared the growing season to have begun. All right, this evening, as of a little after 7 o'clock, we have a couple of thunder showers off to our south and west. You know, I, I talked about last evening, if you look at the northern horizon before sunset, you might see some billowing cumulus clouds with storms and showers up over Lake Erie. Well, this evening before sunset, if you look to the south and west, you might see some billowing cumulus clouds on the uh, horizon with some decaying showers and thunder showers from all around I-70 or Mount Vernon on south. Now, uh, what is happening is we have a warm front heading off to the uh, north. The, the front is most easy to find when you look at the dew points. Of course, north of the front is warm. We got into the 80s today, but this is more of a dew point boundary that's uh, coming to the north. And as this continues making northward progress overnight, uh, shower chances will continue to increase. And I think a lot of us will uh, start to see some raindrops pushing in as we go towards the uh, pre-dawn hours on our Friday. Once again, a severe weather concern across the middle of the country and some of the same places that we had last evening. Uh, the High Plains states, uh, Kansas, the panhandles of Oklahoma and Texas, even eastern Texas getting in on the act, as well as uh, the High Plains of Colorado, east of Denver this evening. Back here at home, again, as we head through the overnight, uh, clouds will thicken. It'll be a warm night. We won't drop below the mid-50s uh, overnight. And as you head out the door tomorrow morning, you probably will run into a scattering of raindrops. There might even be a renegade thunder shower in the mix, but a lot of this will be pretty garden variety shower activity impacting some parts of the area as our Friday gets underway. And, you know, I think Friday morning might be the most consistently wet part of most of the daylight hours on Friday. A few days ago, we, we thought this was more and more of an, an afternoon event on Friday. Now it looks like the bulk of the activity during the daylight hours Friday will be with that warm front in the morning. I think it'll turn wet again in the evening, but largely around and after sunset. So if you have outdoor plans on Friday, uh, the afternoon, we're going to allow for that chance of a passing shower, maybe even a thunderstorm. But I think there'll be more dry time than wet time in the afternoon on Friday. But either way, this will be a pretty healthy drink of water coming our way. Here's a look at our current computer model spread as far as rainfall expectations from late tonight through the day Saturday. There's still a little bit of a spread here. In fact, there's been a little bit more of a spread with today's modeling than yesterday's modeling. Uh, the European model right now suggesting some places might see over an inch and a half worth of rain, but that's kind of an outlier. I think a, a good region-wide average is going to end up being somewhere in here. Three quarters of an inch or so, maybe up to an inch as a region-wide average, but because of the showery nature of uh, this activity, uh, your mileage will certainly vary uh, with regards to how much rain to expect. Uh, the warm front lifts in tomorrow morning, and as I mentioned, the afternoon tomorrow, you know, 
we're going to allow for that chance of a shower or a storm. But I think in the afternoon, a lot of us are going to have, we're going to be able to string together at least a few dry hours in a row before shower and thunderstorm chances try to increase again towards evening. And the reason why they increase again towards Friday evening, the cold front makes its closest approach at that point. Front rolls through, showers might linger through first thing Saturday morning, but the flavor of the day Saturday will just be clouds and much cooler temperatures. We made it into the mid 80s today. We're gonna have a hard time scratching 50 degrees during most of the daylight hours on Saturday. Now that being said, because we're into late April now, the sun doesn't set until almost 8.30 p.m. There may be some sunshine at the last minute. I think the sky will try to clear around 7 or 8 p.m. Saturday evening, leaving us with a clear night and a cold night Saturday night. I don't think we have a frost concern in most areas Saturday night, Sunday morning, but in the absolute coldest nooks, might we you know, sneak down to 34, 35, possibly? possibly, but I think a lot of us are going to see 36 or 37 as Sunday gets underway, and we look for lots of lots of sunshine on Sunday. Monday will be another fine day as well. Sunday and Monday, both locally, will be just fine, but Monday will be a stormy day off to our west. You know, this is pretty far north for a day five outlook. In fact, I think I saw someone tweet today that this is the farthest north the Storm Prediction Center has ever put a enhanced probability of severe weather on day five in their outlook. So a lot of Iowa, southern Minnesota, the upper Mississippi Valley. Now this is Monday into Monday night. For us, the concern will be more Tuesday. And specifically, I think in our local viewing area, eastern Ohio, western Pennsylvania, late in the day on Tuesday. I think thunderstorms will blow up as we get into the afternoon in places like Indianapolis, Cincinnati, Dayton, Toledo. And as that cold front continues marching east, I think we've got a pretty good chance of seeing, at the very least, some garden variety showers and thunderstorms. And I think there will be a chance of some strong and severe thunderstorms in our local area. Uh, mostly, I, I would say, at this early stage of the game after about 4 p.m. Now, today is only Thursday. We're talking about Tuesday here, so we've got a lot of time to iron out the details here. But I, you know, my thinking is this is late in the afternoon and especially early in the evening on Tuesday. So that's something we'll be watching from now through Tuesday, that possibility of some severe weather. Uh, and in the meantime, you know, I, I've been talking about the longer range, how there's some cooler risks as we go into that second week of May. The modeling is really focusing that on a fairly short window at this point. Uh, I think it's that first weekend of May. So this is uh, today's run of the European Extended showing temperature anomalies. And notice as we go into the month of May, right here is where Pretty good uh, cool shot probably tries to come in, by early May standards anyway. And this is, again, right around that first weekend of the month, around the, uh, what's that, the third and fourth into the fifth. Um, this may be kind of the window, though, for a significant cool down, because after that, some of the modeling, you know, it's not a blowtorch looking pattern, but it's not as cool looking on a lot of the modeling. So these risks I've been talking about for some cool early May weather um, may only be here for a couple of days. and. Right now, we're kind of focusing more and more on that first weekend of the month, so about nine or ten days from right now. In the meantime, thanks for watching Weather for Weather Geeks on this Thursday evening. Make it a great rest of your night. Make sure you're following me on all the social medias, and I will see you back here on Friday for an update on the weekend and Tuesday's severe weather risk.